Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Classroom Matters podcast with me, your host, Christy Hull. And today on the Classroom Matters podcast, I am going to be talking with Sandy Joy Weston. Now, Sandy is a keynote speaker, international podcaster, three times published author, and entrepreneur who has owned and operated health and wellness companies for over 30 years. She became the first female trainer for the Philadelphia Flyers and created the nationally recognized Philly Street Line Dance to help combat Philly's fattest city label. For the past five years, Sandy has been focusing on SJW Productions, an international company whose main mission is to highlight all the positive in the world. Her recent book, Recess to Reset, is a guided journal for kids to charge up all the positive stuff they already have inside. It will empower them to tap into their true superpower and unlock their unique and awesome gifts. Sandy, thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome. I am so pumped. Every time I get an opportunity to hang out with my Christy, it's a good day. I know, right? I'm so excited that, um, and just a little side note, we met another time in another world podcast world, right? Like a multiverse <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and so I was telling uh, I was telling Sandy before we jumped on and started recording that I'm actually excited that we get to, we get to be back together and do this again. Um, so I'm actually grateful for the world of Zoom now because prior to Zoom, we probably wouldn't have been able to do this. You know what? You're right. I didn't even think of that. Holler. I know. I love it. I love it. So Sandy, I want to jump in and I want you to start by just, I know the awesome work that you're doing. I I get it. I've done all the research on you. I've looked at all your stuff. I know you. So tell our listeners a little bit about your background and journey to the current work that you're doing. Getting results. And then I had this aha moment when I realized I spent a lot of time getting to understand them and what they needed and what their specific goals were for them and how I could make it work so that they were motivated to love fitness and reach in their goals, you know, and it was different for every single person. Every single person had a slightly different way that I work with them in the mental capacity to reach their physical goals. And so I set out on a journey to discover if there was a secret sauce between the clients that I felt exuded pure joy and if there was something I could teach others. And I took a year to do this. I went and bribed my clients. <laughs> I said, I'll give you free trainings and free memberships if I can just study you for a year. And I took such a cross section. Moms, dads, CEOs, professional athletes, the a- athletes, the average Joe. And I spent like hours with them, interviewing them. And after a year, Christy, I couldn't see anything that was common. I mean, they all believed they deserved a lot in life and they had a lot of confidence and self-worth, but I couldn't see anything I could pass on. And then one of my coworkers said, Sandy, it's right there in front of your eyes. Look, 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 look. Every single one of them do something in the morning to start their day before they go out in the world to get in that positive, powerful headset. Every single one of them. Some of them, it could have been a few minutes. Others, it could have been hours. They could have baked muffins, played jazz music, pet their dog, made lists, worked out, meditate. Didn't matter. It was what worked for them. And they truly believed their attitude, how they showed up in life, especially how they started the day, truly mattered. So then I went out on the next part of the journey And I gathered up what I call the powers to be (laughs) people I felt were in the know, like neuroscientists, exercise physiologists, positive psychologists, sports psychologists, fitness experts, gurus. And I worked with them for another year to say, is there something, a tool that we could give people, a journal that they could reflect on every single day just for a few minutes 
to get them in the headset. And we came up with the acronym, the game plan for goal, action, motivation, energy level, and a little bit more description on realistic goals and the actions you're going to take and really what's motivating you to want this. And then I went out on another year and I gave people that I felt were highly motivated this journal. I said, it's only going to take you five minutes a day, five minutes a day for you to do this. And it's going to change your life. Just try it for 30 days. And I said, I want you to pick one of main three areas, either body health, love relationship, and or money career. Just, and I want you to pick the area that you're sticky with. And so if you're doing really great with body health, then pick money career or love relationship. Well, after a year, it failed. Went bam, fell out on his face. Only one person did it. And these were people that came in the gym. I mean, they were pretty motivated. So I was like, what the freak? So then I went back, met with the powers to be, and they were like, well, of course they didn't do it. No one's going to take five minutes to improve their life unless it's a habit they already set up, unless they already believe it. I go, okay, well, why didn't you tell me that to begin with? They felt I needed to find out firsthand. I differed, but here we were. So then I went back and created a journal for adults at this time that took one to three minutes. And ah, uh, it was a success. What was the difference in the five minute journal and the five to seven minutes, let's say, yeah, yeah. that didn't work? And then yeah. you changed it to the one to three and, and the success. They so, what it. were well, the small little things that you changed? I didn't make it. So, they had to write everything down. I yeah. made a game plan that they did at the beginning and could look at, a power statement they would look at and could write every single day, and one word. But then they would check off on a scale of one to 10. Now it's one to seven on a scale of one to 10. How did you do with meditation, with sleep? It was check, check, check. And my professor, Dr. Kendrick came up with that. He goes, it's got to be one to three minutes. So you have to make it so that they're not writing everything in. It's just a reflection, a reminder that they can look at every day and then take a minute in the morning and then a minute maybe late in the day or at night or even just ask themselves every hour, am I really taking action from this power statement for this word of how I want to show up? And that's what was successful. And moving forward just recently, when the pandemic hit, my publisher said, Sand, we could really use something for kids ages six to 12 with the same premise but of course, gear to them. So of course, I had to go to the kids, see what they wanted. They had to make sure that it didn't feel like homework, that they enjoyed it. They looked forward to it. And although it only takes one to three minutes, it's a lot different. But let me tell you this, my adults are using it just as much because they love the way it's set up with unique powers and superpowers and scribble scrabble. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So are the adults using the kid version for themselves or for their kids or both? Both. So I yeah. was sending it out to my friends for them and grandmas and they're like, uh, yeah, we bought another one. We're using that for us. So I was like, wait a minute, maybe I should do it. And it is fun. And it is something that any age could do. Of course, the kids are using it for different things than adults, but it, it's the same premise. It's how are you choosing to show up in the day? And then if, and only if you want to, there's room for you to get out stuff that really matters to you or to what I call, you know, problem solved in a fun way. Like that just happened. Let me get it out. Now power up. What could I do differently? But it's not viewed upon like I have to do this or it's a homework assignment, which is really huge, not just for kids, but adults too.
Yeah, for sure. And how did you go from, so you went from creating all these things and, and talking to these, to these highly motivated, you know, joyful people, adults, um, about what they're doing. And then you decided kids need this. So what was the most difficult part in going, transitioning from adults and what they need and how you can give them that and what kids, you know, because now we're looking at a whole different beast as far as kids, mental health, kids, physical health, and Mm -hmm. what motivates kids and things that, that drive them every day as opposed to adults. So what was one of the challenges with that transition from adults to, to children? Well, so my publisher thought it was just going to be, I'm glad you asked that. My publisher thought it was just going to be easy peasy, right? I was just going to go, here it is, put a few little fun graphics on it and go for it. But new. Once I started asking kids what they wanted, I realized it's going to look a lot different. It's still going to be short and sweet, but it's going to look a lot different. So I was fortunate enough that right before the pandemic, I was able to go in some classroom with first graders and second graders and work with them. The teachers left me there with them for like an hour. I was like, ah, I mean, like you said, you better be caffeinated up, man. But also the difference is they're really brutally honest with you. So I went in, not even thinking I was going to make this journal at the time with some fun pages for them to do, how we're going to get this headset. And what I learned from them is number one, they wanted to draw a lot of it. They wanted to express a lot of it through, they loved scribble scrabble or express yourself. So they wanted to draw a lot of their feelings, number one. Number two, they really felt they weren't being heard, that they were under a lot of stress and anxiety. So they wanted some place where they could write that no one else would see it. And the third thing that was blowing my mind, which really made me sad, is a lot of them were having trouble sleeping at night. And I would ask them why. And I thought, well, it's because they were, you know, looking at their gadgets, watching TV too late. And a lot of them, it was because they were worried about the world. And I thought, oh, geez, oh, wheeze. And I'm sure some of it came from, you know, they're listening to what their parents are listening to in the home too. And everybody's in the same house, you know, together. So that's why I shifted it and put things in like what I need right now. Hey, I got something to say. That just happened, I need to get it out. I wasn't even gonna put in those categories, but they told me what they wanted and then it took me a year to do it, to make it fun in a way that they would like to do it. So that was the challenging part. Well, and I love the way that you actually went and talked with the children. Because like you said, children can be brutally honest, but that's what you wanted because you wanted something that they would invest in because you want this to be an impact in their lives. And so your motto is all it takes is one to three minutes a day to change your body, your life in a positive way. Why do you believe this? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to hear this because one to three minutes, I'm ready. I have one to three <laughs> minutes a day, Sandy, trust me. And I'm, I'm taking down notes. Knows. Listen, as you're talking, my, my pen isn't going because I'm taking notes. So why, why do you believe this so strongly? And how can mm. kids incorporate this into their daily routine? Okay. So I don't, I get asked this a lot, but I've seen it firsthand. So it's not like I'm just saying that and it's just me. It's worked with so many people from so many backgrounds and so many ages. There is nothing more important, whether you're a kid or adult, then starting your day in a powerful mindset and having that belief system that life doesn't happen to you, you happen to life. No matter what's going on in the world out there, and the kids are worried about it too, nothing is more important in your life than your attitude. And I truly believe that if you went and looked at so many different people that you thought exuded pure joy, it would look like some crazy life and like, whoa, that doesn't look like fun. 
but it's how they chose to show up every single day, that they were in more control than they thought. There's a lot of things you can't control, but you can tr- control a lot your attitude. Now, it's not about being pippy skippy all the time and always coming from joy. No, 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 no. What we talked about. You want to get it out. You're a human being. You get angry. You get mad. You feel jealousy. Hey, it's a healthy way to get it out. And then what? So even for kids, how they start their day, how they go out into the world, just taking those few minutes and then taking action makes a huge difference. So let's say it's about your body and you want to work out. Well, if you say I want to come from ease and flow, or you want to have fun, what can I do with my body for that? You're going to come up with a different workout than somebody else, but you're not going to hate it as much. You're going to find ways to enjoy it, whether it's five minutes a day or an hour, or you're going to find that sport as a kid that you really like. If it's about love relationships or just making friends, because you spent time being more in that loving mindset, joyful, peace, ease, and flow versus you're in the fear-based mindset, the friends you draw in are going to be the right friends for you. So I'm telling you, Christy, it doesn't take long. Yeah, you're going to take action after that. And what you do with your homework, with your friends, with your free time, whether it's kids or adults, the choices you make are going to take longer but they're not going to be dreaded because you spent those few minutes reminding yourself throughout the day, is this going to bring me what I decided to have joy, love, ease and flow, fun, power. And then even just stopping for a minute. And I teach kids this all the time. We call it take a step back, put on the brakes and just hold up and breathe just for a few seconds and check in with where they are. It makes a huge difference. And you should see kids do it. They have so much fun. They've created a dance for it, but you know, it's like, take a step back and then they twirl and it gives them time to settle down, you know, and relax. Yeah, one of the dances they taught me was so fun. I call it the celebration dance. But in that moment when they're relaxing, then they can think about the next step that's good for them. Whether it's going upstairs to be by themselves, going on social media, hanging out with their friends. We're training them younger to think about those things, which we always talk about being in the present moment, but they're just, they're tuning into their bodies younger. Can you imagine if we started doing that when we were little, where would be now? So that's my whole goal to get them younger. Yeah. Get them younger. And you know, as you're, as you're talking, I'm thinking about a couple of things, you know, because we're talking about children here. And so as the adults in their lives, whether you're a parent or a teacher or a mentor or someone in a child's life. How important is it to be a role model with these types of um, programs and your the books that you've created for you to be doing that and so that your child sees or your student sees you doing it and you're not just pushing it on them, but you're not being the, the, the example. Is that important as well that the adults are creating these mindsets and, and these habits? Christy, it's the most important thing, the most important thing, because, you know, we're always talking about what teachers could do and the educators could do, but man, oh man, you know, it starts in the home and kids pick up everything. Forget what you're saying. They can read your body language, Mm -hmm. feel your emotion. So that's why I always say kids and adults, you can't just say this is just for the kids because you've got to find your own way of doing it too. Matter of fact, I go in just as much to do workshops with teachers and counselors, if not more, so that they know what to do with the kids. It's just as equal because they realize if they're freaking out and stressed and anxious and depressed all the time, the kids are going to pick it up. So it's just as important, if not more important. 
Yeah, and I and I and I'm envisioning that too, right? It's like the kids aren't going to take you very serious if, you know, for example, I have three boys in my house and if every morning when they get up to come to breakfast and I'm in the kitchen and I'm grumpy and complaining and miserable that I had to get out of bed to make their breakfast, but then I say, "Did you fill out your your positive journal yet this morning?" <laughs> Like, what? This lady's nuts. She's down here, you know, complaining and carrying on. And now she's telling me to go, you know, fill out my recess to reset journal and think positive thoughts. So, by you know, the way, like, it happens all the time. Uh, it does. I'm sure it does. I can does. only imagine. And and so that's why I think it's so important to talk about that that example that you're setting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or And that's why when you were talking earlier about parents or grandparents or teachers wanting to do the same journal. Yeah. You know, because it can fit them too. If you're pulling it out and doing it together, right? Or in the car, if yeah. your kiddos are in the back seat and they're jotting some things down and you read ahead the night before as you're laying there and said, okay, tomorrow morning, we're going to do this one in the, in the morning on the way to school or on the Ooh, way I to never the bus stop. That or, one. I never yeah. thought of that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, and something else, and I don't know if you've ever heard this, but as you was you were talking, I was thinking of something that I heard years ago, and it really stuck with me. And it aligns to the some of the things you're talking about when we're setting the example for children, especially first thing in the morning. And, and what I heard at some point, and I don't remember where I heard this or who said this, but the way that you react to a child entering the room um, can set the tone, even if you change the way you react after they've been in the room, can really set the tone for their negative or positive way that they think about themselves. So if a child walks into the kitchen for the first time or in the afternoon and your immediate reaction to them is negative or bothersome or they're, you know, what do you want or whatever, that can set the tone for them. Even if you change your behavior and then you start being friendly and, and caring to them, um, that immediate response to their walking into a setting with you is the one that sticks with them the most. Um, so I've always kind of tried to carry that with me. And even if I'm upset with my child or disappointed in something they've done, or I know they're coming to see me on maybe not the best terms because we need to have a conversation about something. When my son walks into that room or gets into that car with me, my first um, interaction with them is caring, positive, loving. I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy to see you. You know, then I might go into, okay, now we need to have a conversation about something that I got a note from your teacher. But that initial uh, interaction with them, I think is so important. And I think that the work that you're doing sort of sets that up to the beginning of the day. You know, I have never thought of it in that way. But I'm just thinking, Christy, my son now is 18 and my daughter's out of the house. And for the most part, I do do that in the morning or when he gets home from school. But once in a while, when he's just getting in the car, I have said to him, hey, did you hand that in? Did you do this? Did you talk to the teacher? And he just said to me last week, Ma, really? Is this how you want to start the ride? Can't we just ease into it and he was joking like hey yeah. i'm so happy to see you and that makes sense now and i said yeah. you're right you're right but i wasn't thinking about it that way but it makes mm -hmm. sense the yeah. initial yeah. happy good to see you how's everything and then down the road yeah i yeah. love that i yeah. love that because you do have to have those, you know, you have to say, you know, what about your homework or can we talk about this test yeah. that I just got back? You know, that obviously it will come. Um, but I think it's the same with adults, right? So it's like if I jump on a call with you and I'm like busy doing something and sort of like, oh, now we have to do this. And then a few minutes later, I'm like, oh, hey, you know, that might not make <laughs> you feel as warm and welcome as it does. <laughs> No, you know what? And that happened to me. I was going on a podcast and the guy was sitting there doing work. Yeah. And, like this. and I and felt you're like, what the heck? Why did you uh, click the button? But yeah. it's the same thing is if you walk in the door after sitting in traffic and your spouse says, did you go to the grocery store? Did you pick up the, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Can I come in the door? Yeah. And you, it's yeah. hard to, you know, retrieve from that. 
It is. It is. So I know you talk a lot about students setting themselves up for success and reaching their goals. And a lot of times when parents or teachers think about setting goals, they think about this mind numbing, writing down goals and all these things process. But talk about how simple uh, students creating goals for themselves can be and how parents and teachers can help them to create goals for success. You know, Krista, it, it does matter how you're doing it, what their age is. So it's going to look different for a six and seven year old than it is an 18 year old. But with the young kids, like the six to 12 year olds, I like to make a fun game out of it. So again, they're not looking at it like homework. So we'll, we'll talk about first their superpower. And we make sure that we touch on all the superpowers, not just being a great athlete or singer or musician that sometimes we think of, but being a great listener, a writer, a compassionate person. So I like to go into all the things that is their superpower and their unique gifts. And then from the unique gifts, you play off, well, what goals do you have around those unique gifts. So for some kids, let's say one of their, let's deal with just school, their new unique gift was reading. They thought they were an excellent reader versus the other kid that was really great at math. You know, so we'll highlight some of their skills, just like I know you've heard of, you know, growth mindset, we'll highlight what their, some of their skills are that they love doing, but then how could we work just a little bit better on the other ones to improve them. Well, now they don't just feel like they're dwelling on, oh my God, you know what I mean? I'm horrible at reading or I'm horrible at math. I first try to start out with the thing that they really love doing and what they're great at. That doesn't mean you don't have to read and write or do math, but they feel really good about themselves instead of frustrated while you're setting the goals for them for that week or that month. Mm -hmm. And you touched a little bit on character traits. And so I want to I want to expand on that with you, because I know when we spoke the last time, that was something that really struck me and something that I really took away from our last conversation that we did. Um, and is that it's not about a child because there are a lot of kids that don't feel academically that they're doing well or yeah. don't feel that there's another, you know, part of, of their extracurricular life that they are excelling in. You know, they might not be a great musician. They might not be an athlete. Um, they might not do well academically. So talk about a little bit more how we can pull out some of those superpowers mm. from these kids that feel like they have nothing to offer, but they do. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you remembered that. I'm so glad. Well, I'll give you a perfect example of something that just happened recently, and then we'll go back into that. One of my friends slash clients was having a lot of trouble with her seven-year-old daughter being engaged in school because she really has trouble with focus. And she's probably slightly dyslexic. So reading is really tough and numbers are really tough, and she just couldn't fit in. The mom took her one day to her brother's dance class just to watch and she's sitting over there and she's starting to do it and all of a sudden she lit up and she's like oh call her sally bell do you want to take dance she's like yeah mom i live all good a bit well she puts her in dance class and she's loving it like she's just really good at it well guess what happened to all her grades at school I still get chills and want to cry for her. I'm not saying she's getting A's in math or A's, in, but everything moved up. She wanted to be engaged. She started doing better because she didn't feel like what she felt like she was good at nothing. She was so happy with this one thing. And that happens with everything. If Even if you highlight someone, which is such a great skill that, they're compassionate, they're friendly, they're a great listener, they, they're, they're a great writer, there's something in them. They have a beautiful smile, they're 
funny. There's so many things. There's like hundreds of things that you could think of that are great character traits that you could highlight in that kid and really make them feel good about what it is. Even if it's off the beaten path, I promise you the rest of it will come along. It does for us. If you know, there's one of three areas we picked, whether it was, you know, love relationship or whatever. When you work on that one area of body health and you just even just work on the other, that one area and don't work on the others, the others come along because you've built up your self-esteem, your confidence, and you really believe, especially as kids, wow, I do have a unique gift to offer the world. I really do. I had one little boy, he likes working with animals, but he didn't think of that as an awesome trait. And he goes in and he helps out with the horses once a week. And he feels so good that he's taking care of something that's really, you know, he feels good about. It just makes me yeah. so happy. Yeah. And I think it's wonderful how as adults, we are really, we need to pull this out of children because they're not going to do that for themselves. No, and no. if you have like the child that, uh, you know, you said that was interested in dance, things will start to come along, you know, and it builds up. Even if you have a child that maybe, you know, if there's nothing else going on great with that child, and the most you can say is you have the most beautiful smile in this room, yep. you have beautiful hair, you're a great dresser, you always come in the nicest outfits. Those small yep. things, like you said, are going to manifest into Huge. other things getting bigger. So I'm glad that you brought up that, that small piece as well. So tell us a little bit about the game plan, the power statement, the action plan. And I want you to sort of align those things to academic and classroom performance. Okay. So your game plan, which you're thinking it took you a year to come up with that, but it's the acronym. <laughs> For fun, it's a game plan. G is for goal. And it's really getting whatever age the kid is at to understand realistic goals and breaking them down so they don't feel overwhelmed, which is really important for the teacher and or parent to do. And just like adults, you want to see success with it. So you say, well, okay, you want to do that? Well, let's just do a few minutes every day and build on it so that at the end of 30 days, they see success. Like number two, making them understand or helping them, I should say, understand what action it will take. So like if they wanted to be in the school play, what would it take to be in the school play? If I had a girl who wanted to make bracelets and enter a competition, how many bracelets would she have to make every single day? So relating, okay, if you want that goal, this is the action we would have to do. Do you want to practice that often? Are you willing to do it for that goal? And it's really the teacher to sit down for them to see like, oh, okay, that seems a lot. Maybe I'll back it down so they can see success. And then you can still really, really talk to these kids about their motivation. Like, why do you want this? And make sure you get to, I want to do this because I enjoy it. I like it. I want to do this versus I'm trying to impress my mom, my dad, my friends, the teacher. That's really important. And that's going to take a, a, that's a lifetime. But start then to the motivation of why they really want it. And then I always like to put like how much energy on a scale of like one to seven you would have to put in to this game plan. The power statement is a fun statement that lights you up. So for kids, it's a fun thing they say that really brings a smile to their face when they think about their game plan. You know, like, I got this. Everything works out to me for me. Like a fun statement that like, oh, my superpower is I am a great listener. I love uh, playing in the band. I love being in choir. I'm so excited to do my math homework. Like it's a power statement that really brings a smile to their face, not my face, their face. And it backs up their game plan, which sets them up for a realistic 
game, goal, action, motivation, energy. But again, I'm going to emphasize that it doesn't seem like homework to them. I make it that they really want it and they see the benefits and it's a fun thing to do. Even the journal, I want them to look forward to it versus did you do your homework? You know, that they can't wait to run upstairs like a lot of the kids and do it. Mm -hmm. And when these things start to come together, I assume then that if things are lacking in the classroom setting, those things start to come together too. Kind of like what we talked about with the building the self-confidence and the self-esteem. Yeah. It, it yeah. really does. And here's the deal. When the kids start looking at their game plan and looking at their power statement and looking if they, whatever journal they wrote in or pictures they scribble scrabbled, they really start at a really young age realizing what they want. And they can, I'm telling you, it's so funny to see them going, you know, hey, Miss Sandy, I was feeling this in my body and I knew what I needed was to go outside and just yell. Like, it's so cool to see that at such a young age. It's so fun. Yeah. So I want to talk quickly before we wrap up about the Recess to Reset. Now, this is a guided journal. Mm hmm set to really charge up a kid's positivity and positive mindset. When So explain to me a little bit when you say guided journal, what are what can parents and teachers expect when they get their reset to reset or recess? It's a mouthful. Say it three times. <laughs> recess to reset. Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> I mean, There's a lot of that. R's and S's in there, Sandy, but it's catchy. <laughs> Um, when they get their recess to reset books, what can they expect in a guided okay. journal? Okay. So <laughs> the most important thing, it's got a lot of fun artwork and it right away on the front cover, it says this journal belongs to, and you know, fun ways to create your superpowers. And so they look forward to it and they, they can see like on the, even the front cover, there's not just little things like uh, a bike and a soccer ball, but there's also books and trees so that they can relate just even when first looking at it, like that this could be them, you know, that this could be them. And then the pages, each one of them at the top, which I have to admit is my favorite thing. It goes back and forth from one thing that you may have not known, which most of the things you will not know, to a fun joke, to a quote. And it just keeps alternating every single day. And then in it, it has a place for your superpower, your super message, my word of the day. Express yourself in a place that you could do all your little scribble, scrabbling drawings. A place that says, that just happened, get it out. And... If I refueled my brain, what are the possibilities? What could I do instead? For example, if in it, you didn't do well in your math test, you know, it gives you like, oh my God, that, that was horrible. That sucked. I can't believe I failed again, but it starts making them think, okay, what could I do to improve? So I had one little boy said, well, I actually went to my teacher and asked for help. I got a tutor. I actually found out that. I am dyslexic. So they change things up to be audible. So it starts making them think, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's got to be other ways to succeed. So I think that's really cool. Besides a place that a lot of them use as a private space to express themselves and to talk about what they need right now. And by doing this, it allows them the confidence to talk to their parents and their teachers, which... I think is incredible. Yeah. And being a former teacher and, and principal and parent, I think it's incredible because when you just hand a journal to children that's blank, right? Even, even my mind blanks out yeah. when uh, someone's like, do you journal? And I'm like, well, I should journal. And then I go to the store to buy, to buy a journal and I open it and it's just got a bunch of white lines and I'm, I sit there and no, stare no. at the page. I don't know what to write. So no. I love the fact that this is guided. It's interactive. It's fun. It's, you know, giving children options of what to fill in, um, those types of things. And we're not, you know, because kids aren't the ones that are going to just sit down and start writing about no. their day. It's hard for adults no. to do that. No, no, um, no. 
So this yeah. is this a wonderful tool. It's a wonderful resource for parents, for teachers, uh, for counselors, for um, PE, for really all classes. I mean, I think you can really wrap this into everything that kids are doing from the time they get up to the time they go to bed at night Um, because their brains are always going, their bodies are always moving. And teaching them, I think, at a young age is also uh, such an important thing. And what you've done with this is you've given kids and parents and teachers a tool to get them started at a very early age for things that they're more than likely going to be expected to do as young adults. And so they're, they're creating great habits, they're creating practice, they're creating goal setting skills. Um, so I think it's just really a wonderful, wonderful resource um, for kids and, and, and adults alike. So Sandy, where can folks find you? Is there a website they can go to to get in contact with you? Where can I send my listeners? Everything is sandyjoyweston.com, sandyjoyweston.com. And all my social media too is Sandy Joy Weston. Yeah. And how funny is that, that it's Sandy Joy <laughs> Weston. I know do you get that a lot. <laughs> your name had something to do, Sandy, with what you do in the world? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> funny. Well, Sandy Joy Weston, thank you so much for being with us. I'm delighted. What a fun conversation. You're always just really fun to, to, to talk to. And I know that my listeners have enjoyed this conversation as well. So thank you again for joining us uh, on today's show. And I just want to know, Christy, are you going to make sure this goes out? Or are you going to use another excuse for us to get back together? <laughs> I know. You know, I, I don't know. I might. I'm, I'll find another reason. Don't worry. Whether it's just a Zoom coffee yeah. date or I need help with something. You know, I, I've got a whole bunch of reasons that I can reach out to you again. <laughs> so much fun. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And this is Christy Houle signing off for this episode of the Classroom Matters podcast. And don't forget to check out all of our wonderful resources on the new Educate.today.